Good evening and welcome to, I suppose we should call this series commentary, although someone suggested I call it All Things Considered. I think American National Public Radio already has that, but anyway, our commentary on All Things Considered. Uh, <clears throat> we've discussed a number of subjects, and in, in no particular sequence or connection, it's questions that come up and things that people ask or things I think are of interest. And I was going to touch about one of the great problems of our day, which is obesity. Obesity doesn't, I mean, the epidemic of obesity we have has to have an underlying cause other than just the number of calories eaten and the kinds of food consumed. Of course, if one looks at Wendy's, I think it's called a, the Baconator, and then there's the Son of Baconator or something, where you have a, a, a full hamburger patty, then a layer of cheese, a layer of bacon, then another hamburger patty, another layer of cheese, another layer of bacon. Well, that's genuinely sinful. Far too many calories for anyone to consume. And considering how many people are literally starving to death in this world, makes it even more sinful. But that isn't the issue this evening. We can perhaps grouse about that later. Um, the problem with obesity as a, an epidemic this has to do with environmental chemicals. And so many problems in our world do have something to do with environmental chemicals. The fact is that some of the chemicals that are popularly used, um, tributylin, and bisphenol A come to mind. Uh, both of these chemicals actually convert reproductive cells into fat cells, into fat. And it becomes a kind of something that's even genetically transmitted. The same with DES, which is an estrogen replacement. And um, these pseudoestrogens in our society than our environment, which are just chemical pollutants, are uh, really, really creating a lot of havoc in this world. And it's something to we need to pause on once in a while. Uh, the, when, when the uh, normal reproductive system converted to fat cells by chemicals, but and pseudoestrogens are among the most destructive, because they feminize the male uh, parts of species, and reproduction becomes very difficult or even impossible. Uh, and, and I rather suspect that it's those kind of pollutants that um, have probably increased the, the gay population amongst humans. Certainly, the gay population in other species is, is actually seen more often. You know, there, there's always been homosexuality as pan species. There's, I, don't, I can't think of any species, at least not of, um, of mammals or fowl, which, in which it's not manifested. But uh, in, in human beings, of course, as well. And now we're not talking about things like heterosexual people having sex with young men. Of course, that happens constantly in every society, more so in Semitic societies and in Afghanistan. We're talking about actual homosexuality. The pseudoestrogen pollutants have to have something to do with that as something that's increasing. Because people, of course, are born homosexual. You can't. It's impossible to become homosexual. And it's impossible to change a person from being homosexual. It's simply not within the realm of possibility, all of the uh, wild-eyed and fanatical superstitions notwithstanding. That's why the um, head of the, the Exodus cult just retired, uh, because he had to finally admit that he was wrong about, uh, about this, and that uh, really they were causing a lot of pain and suffering among people. So uh, that has to be something to do, if there's an increase, in the percentage of population, the percentage of, of uh, gay people in any given society should be between three and four percent 
generally not more than that, because that's the normal level in any given society. But when it, it goes beyond that, of course, then it has something to do with, it has to have something to do with the pseudoestrogens in, in our environment. Uh, tributylin and bisphenol A, which actually change or create fat cells in the reproductive system, and can be evidently now, I'm not going to say this absolutely, whether it can be transmitted genetically, although we do know that some of these things can be transmitted genetically. Um, it, we've had studies on, on these things done in various societies. We might touch on that later, how eating habits, uh, the children of the Dutch people raised during the Nazi occupation when there was something of a famine, there was a great deal of hunger. The eating habits and um, other digestive habits and other things of the next generation were affected genetically from that generation that went through this. So we know that these things do are handed down some way. But uh, I, 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 I'm particularly concerned with those uh, chemicals which are carcinogenic as well as causing, uh, re really contributing to if not outright causing many of the cases of, of obesity among people. Because uh, an actually obese person, some people absolutely cannot lose any of the weight without surgery. Uh, other people only with enormous difficulty can lose some of the weight because the fat cells stay. And if it's being caused by environmental pollutants, then really one of the greatest draws, you know, in, in the healthcare system, they will just skip all of the uh, fantastic lies that the Republican candidates in America tell about the Canadian healthcare system because they know they're lying. Unfortunately, the American people don't. But anyway, uh, the healthcare system, the biggest drains on it are tobacco and environmental pollutants, such as tributylin and bisphenol A. Uh, the, these are among things that need to be resolved and solved at the governmental level in order to save probably billions of dollars in healthcare money from those. Uh, and it, it behooves local populaces to find out how much of, how many of these pollutants are in their area and how many things like this they're taking in through the water supply and in the food. Some of these chemical pollutants are in almost all the foods that you eat and you can't wash them off. They've, they've entered into more into the texture of, of, of apples and, and things like that uh, so that you can't really get rid of them. And they're having a very, very profound effect on human health and uh, on human sexuality. And um, even uh, psychiatric, things that we would consider psychiatric illnesses. So uh, local citizens, if you care about your children, yourselves, in the future, you should look into these things. You know, we had a terrible outbreak of Minamoto's disease in the English Wabagoon Rivers um, valleys, drainage areas, in um, Ontario, Manitoba and well, really in Ontario. And the native peoples were being born with mental defects as well as other health problems. Minamoto's disease, of course, is an excess of mercury. And mercury is produced by certain kinds of mining and industry. And then, of course, it's dumped and finds its way into the water system. The fish in the uh, English River and the Wabagoon River were heavily polluted with mercury. Native people reading the fish and taking water supplies from the river as well sometimes. And they then ended up with an epidemic of Minamoto's disease, which is, is caused by mercury. So, and uh, if any of you watched the um, video preceding this one on the reclamation of a salmon stream, it's still uh, agricultural pollutants, which include vast amounts of hormone and uh, antibiotics. Now, antibiotic use is, is much more limited by law in Canada than, than I believe in America. But it's a great part of the reason why we have uh, antibiotic resistant microbes, you know, bacteria uh, and things, 
is because of agricultural pollution from dairy farms, beef farms, hog farms, chicken farms. Because so much excess, a vastly excess, amounts of antibiotics are given to these animals. And then they rather urinate on the ground uh, as cattle and dairy cattle and uh, beef cattle do, or in the hog barn where hogs are pinned up in the most cruel and, and savage way, suffering all their lives only to be slaughtered for, uh, you know, bacon. Or chickens who are also treated in the most cruel and inhumane way. They don't get to urinate on the ground at all. However, the barns are cleaned out, the stuff goes out onto the ground. Sometimes it, it's cast in unprocessed slurry across the, the farmland for hay fields and uh, other things and finds its way into the whole water system and finds its way into our food. And then we have antibiotic resistance uh, bacteria that kill us. Things that haven't for a century, a better part of a century anyway, been fatal are now fatal again. You know, we can't even treat all uh, cases of tuberculosis. And in the 40s, we came finally to the point where we cured tuberculosis. and didn't have to send people off to the sands anymore, the, the sanitariums. And, uh, but all this is taking place again. And even if you're not an environmentalist, sheer self-interest and the interest and welfare of your children should motivate you to see if you can't join together with other people and do something about these problems. And uh, if you don't, then the main thing I have to say is, you don't love your children, you don't care about them. You, you, you don't love your grandchildren, you don't care about your grandchildren. So don't pretend, you just don't. If you give them fine Christmas presents, but how about giving them life and the possibility of life in the future? The best gift you can give your children is to try to help clean up the environment so they have a healthy, safe place to live instead of an increasingly unsafe environment and place to live. So anyway, that's all things considered for this evening, or my commentary, whichever we're going to call it. And uh, I'll um, I'll be happy to hear from you folks about these things. Love your children, love your grandchildren, do something to help clean up the environment, so they won't die of simple virus, uh, simple bacteria that haven't killed people for centuries, some of them, and for a better part of a century, others. You know, ordinary sanitation, of course, brought an end to a lot of these diseases. Uh, then, of course, antibiotics helped a great deal. Uh, but give your children this gift. Give your grandchildren this real gift of love. Thank you and God bless you.